read here. Um, go to Philippians 2, 7 through 11 there in, in the message. So obviously we know that God honored us by redeeming mankind when mankind fell. Is that right? So we just read in the, in, in, at some time in eternity when the plan of redemption was being brought forth and Jesus said, I'll go. Father, I'll go. I will put on flesh. I will become a man. I will spill my blood for them, pay the price for their sin, and redeem them back from the hands of the enemy. Amen? You guys, let me, oh, fell off my ear. Shoot a monkey. Hang on. Really don't shoot a monkey. Okay. So let me read this in Philippians 2, 7 through 11 in the message. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave. He became human. Having become human, he stayed human. Underline that. So you think about this. God himself, God the Son, put on flesh. He became a man. And do you know that throughout all of eternity, because he chose to do this, he will forever and ever be a man. Does that not make your brain go tilt? What honor and what love that God himself <clears throat> emptied himself of his deity privileges to come in an earth suit to, to become one of us so that he could buy us back. And he's in a glorified body right now. You realize he didn't have flesh before he came to the earth, right? right. You, you do know God didn't have a, a fleshly body, a, a, an earth suit. But throughout all of eternity, this is how God so honored us that he chose to identify with me and you in this way. That makes my brain go tilt, you guys. What love and what honor... What love and what honor. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave. He became human. You, do, you guys do realize that he redeemed us as a man, correct? That's the only way redemption could come about is if he was one of us. Amen. Amen. He became a man, he became human, and he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God lifted him high and honored him far uh, beyond anyone or anything ever, so that all created beings in heaven and on earth, even those long ago dead and buried, will bow in worship before this Jesus Christ and call out in praise that he is the master of all to the glorious honor of God the Father. Amen. That is a big deal. I agree. He forever clothed himself with flesh and will throughout all of eternity be in a flesh body. Though glorified, he's in a glorified body, and that's where we're headed. Amen. We're headed for a glorified body. Amen. And so you guys picture this. There is a man sitting at the right hand of God the Father. There is a man sitting at the right hand of God the Father. 
say honor. God honored us, you guys. God honored us. And this is how he looks at us. And this is how he values us. And we were created to work with him and to partner with him in the earth. That's what we were created for. Yes, to be his family. Yes, to be his body in the earth. But we were created to partner with him. To rule and to reign and have dominion. All right. So I, let's, quickly, let's quickly look at this because I want to show you in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. I'm going to let you put those up. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, what's the next two words? I will, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Do you see here his free will? Yes, angels have a free will. Amen. Go ahead. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. I will be like the most high. Who's like the most high? We are. Say, I am. I'm like the most high. He created me that way. Say it. He created me that way. I am like the most high. And Satan is ticked. Satan is ticked because we have the position that he wanted. Okay. Tell me again, what do angels hearken to? Psalm 103.20. God's word in our mouth. Angels hearken to the voice of God's word. Bless the Lord, you his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So we, there are angels on assignment, and if we want them working for us and with us, in this ruling and reigning and having dominion in the earth, then there needs to be something coming out of our mouth. And what is it? The word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that's what they were created to do. The Bible says that they are ministers to the heirs of salvation. That's us. Yes, that's, right. that's us. And they are um, They're pretty excited. They're pretty excited about fulfilling God's commands. Yeah. All right? So... Get the word in your mouth and untie your angel's hands and put them to work. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. All right. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And then what does he say? Choose life. I record this day against you that I have set... Uh, Life and death, blessing and cursing. Let me help you out here. Choose life. We have a free will. Amen? Does God have a free will? Oh, that's not a trick question. Of course he does. Of course he does. We are, we are made in his image. Of course he has a free will. Of course he has the right to choose. Just like we have the right to choose. Here's the thing. God has chosen to be bound by his word. God has chosen to be bound by his word. We do not have to wonder if he's going to be up one day and down the next or if he's going to fulfill his word one day and not the next. He has promised us that he bound himself to his word and we can always, always count on it. Yeah, but God is sovereign. He can do whatever he wants to do. Sure enough, God is sovereign. God can do whatever he wants to do. And he chose to bound himself to his word. Amen. Amen. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see here. 1 Corinthians 3, 9. Let's look at that. 
so as creatures that are made in his likeness and in his image. Would y'all agree that God has done some pretty phenomenal things? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of creation, you know, miracles. Yeah. Yeah. And we are made in his image and his likeness. And we are commanded to have dominion over the works of his hand in the earth. Amen. So the miraculous flowing through us to others, is that supposed to be happening? Does, does, it, does that flow from God? Then it flows through us. It is to be flowing through us. Amen. Um, 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says, For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. God honored us in such a way that he says, I want to work with you. I want to partner with you, not just in this life, not just for 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120 years. I want to partner with you throughout eternity, Kyle. I have a plan and a purpose for you that is throughout all of eternity. All of eternity. <clears throat> that God has chosen to partners, partner, partners, partner with us. Yeah. Laborers together with God. You know, our God is a creator. Yeah. He will never stop creating. And it makes our brains go, whoo, we just thinking about all of creation that is to come. And what our assignments will be throughout all of eternity. But you guys, this life on this earth, we're in training. We are in training for eternity. For our purpose in eternity. Has God honored mankind? Amen. 2 Timothy 2.13 God honors us by remaining faithful even when we are not. Is this what the word says? If we believe not, yet he abides faithful, for he cannot deny himself, for he cannot deny his word. Oh, glory to God. God honors us with his loving kindness and his tender mercies every single day. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. And then Psalm 89, 34, I want to look at this. God honors us. Psalm 89 and verse 34, he declares, My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. God honors us by keeping his word. God honors us by keeping the covenant that he cut. Glory to God. The covenant that he cut with mankind is not dependent upon mankind. Thank God is right. God the Father cut covenant with God the Son. And God the Son stood in, in, in our stead in all of mankind so we can enter that covenant by faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. And God says here, my covenant Will I not break, nor will I alter the thing that has gone out of my lips? God honors us by keeping his word. God honors us by keeping his word. Amen. All right, let's turn to Luke 5. And we're going to start in... Uh, Verse 17. Um, and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching, this is Jesus, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee. Say every town. Every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, would you say that that was probably a pretty big crowd? Okay. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Please underline that. 
in all the times that I have read this passage, and Pat, y'all remember that pastor, um, he read this, I don't know, a few weeks ago. Oh my gosh, I had never, ever seen this before. There were Pharisees, doctors of the law, sitting by, which have come from every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Jesus was teaching, and you're going to notice that in, in the life of Jesus, he always taught. It said he went about teaching. You're always going to see this. He went about teaching and healing all who were oppressed of the devil and healing all who were sick. He went about teaching. So the teaching of the word, he always taught the word and then he healed them why is that because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so he always taught the word and it says and the power of the Lord was present to heal them then it says and behold some men were bringing on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed and they tried to carry him in and lay him before Jesus but finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him with his stretcher through the tiles into the midst in front of Jesus. You have no idea how much I love this passage. These are the friends that we must have in our lives. That no matter what, I'm not going to pet you. I'm not going to whine with you. I'm not going to be distraught with you. I'm getting you to Jesus. Because Jesus is your help. Oh, glory to God. <clears throat> and not only this, we need to be that person. We need to be that person in people's lives, you guys. Amen. <clears throat> and when he saw their confidence in him springing from their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiving, forgiven you. And when he saw their faith, say, saw their faith. Saw their faith. God can see your faith. Yes. God has to see your faith. There's action to our faith. He saw something. Yeah. Their faith in him propelled them to action. Yes. They didn't just sit in the house just hoping and wishing for something to change in their lives. Amen. Their faith in him propelled them to get to him. And all of them, the man on the stretcher and the guys that were carrying him, the word says that Jesus saw their faith. Jesus saw their confidence in him. Let's keep reading. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, circle that, and question, circle that, and argue, circle that, saying, Who is this man who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? The signs of religious thinking and religious spirits is reasoning, questioning, and arguing. That's religion. That is religion right there. That, that is not... Faith in our heart, responding to God's word, that is, all right, I am hearing what you're saying, but I'm keeping it right up here, and I'm going to reason it out in my mind, or I'm going to argue with it and, and try to come up with a rebuttal as to why this can't be so. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. You're being influenced. I'm being influenced by religious spirits when we do this. Faith is of the, come on, heart, right? Faith isn't reasoning. Faith isn't questioning. Faith is of the heart. And when we hear the word of God, faith comes. Now, because faith comes, do we have to respond in faith? No, we don't have to. We don't have to. We can be sitting under the word because the word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God can be taught, can be taught, can be taught. But it says faith comes by hearing, not just listening. Faith is of the heart. 
Okay? Let's keep reading. Um, Who can forgive sins but God alone? But Jesus, knowing their thoughts and questionings, answered them, saying, Why do you question in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or say, Arise and walk about? What is the difference? What is the difference between Jesus saying to you, Chris, your sins are forgiven, or be healed of the disease that is in your body? There is no difference. Why is there disease in anyone's body? Because of sin. And if Jesus came to do away with sin by his shed blood, then disease has no right to be in our body because redemption from our sins, the act of shedding his blood, was the same act that eradicated the disease in our bodies. Does that make sense? I didn't just talk in circles there. Your sins are forgiven you. You have been redeemed. I came to do away with sin, disease, sickness, lack, poverty, depression, hurt, you know, relationships torn apart. That's all part of the curse. Amen? And if sin has been dealt with, are your sins under the blood? Are your sins under the blood? Then there is no curse, do you? Amen? Amen. I've been redeemed. You've been redeemed. And so anytime, go to Deuteronomy 28, look at the curse. Anytime those things arise in our lives, what is our response to that? The word. This says that this disease or whatever, that lack, poverty, is under the curse. It calls it a curse. It doesn't call it a blessing. And Galatians 3.13 says what? Next level students. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. Okay. So the power of the Lord was present to heal when he was in that house teaching. And the, the house was so full that they had to lower this man down in the roof, through the roof. How many people does it say got healed that day? That one man. And yet the the power of the Lord was present to heal. Is it possible to come into an environment? Is it possible to come into a church where the word of God is being preached? The power of the Lord present to heal. And yet you and I walk away with nothing. It is possible. It is possible. Would you say that these men who brought the man on the stretcher and sat him in front of Jesus, would you say that he demonstrated honor? Absolutely. Absolutely he did. Let's keep reading here. Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to arise and walk about, but that you may know that the Son of Man has the power, the authority, and the right on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, arise, pick up your stretcher, and go to your own house. And instantly the man stood up before them and picked up what he had been lying on and went away to his house, recognizing and praising and thanking God. Verse 26. And overwhelming astonishment and ecstasy seized them all, and they recognized and praised and thanked God, and they were filled with and controlled by reverential fear and kept saying, We have seen wonderful and strange and incredible and unthinkable things today. Now, it amazes me that we go from up here in verse 21 where the scribes and the Pharisees were reasoning and questioning and arguing Yet, God, uh, Jesus heals this man, and in verse 26, it says, They were all astonished, and they all recognized, all of them, recognized and praised and thanked God, and they were filled with and controlled by the fear of the Lord and kept saying, We have seen wonderful and strange and incredible and unthinkable things today. 
So my point on verse 26 is this. Is it possible for our honor for the Lord and for the things of the Lord to affect others who at the present time have no honor? Oh, yeah, it is. Is it possible for us to come together on Sunday with such an expectancy and such honor in our hearts for the Lord and for his things and with a spirit of faith that it completely changes the lives of people who came in without that heart? Oh, yes, it is. It is. And that's our job, you guys. That's our job to create an atmosphere in this house of such honor for the Lord and for his things, charging this, this atmosphere with such a spirit of faith that we are expecting the miraculous. We're, we're expecting the miraculous. We're expecting people to be saved and born again, swept into the kingdom of God. Amen. Y'all should be smiling. Amen. Believing for the miraculous to take, bla- uh, to take place. Ooh, sounded like Bugs Bunny there or something. No, Elmer Fudd, the wascally wabbit. Um, <clears throat> but expecting for the miraculous to take place. This is what happens in the atmosphere of honor. Honor for God's house. Honor for people. Honor for the things of God. We actually set up by that, by our, the attitude of our hearts, the spirit of faith, for God to move and for miraculous things to come about. Aren't y'all ready to see people who have, been, who have just been ripped apart by sickness and disease, by lack and poverty, who've been ripped apart in relationships, strife, Marriages that are just about to go down the tubes. Aren't you ready to see something spectacular, the miraculous? Amen. We have a part to play. We can't just sit like knots on a log and say, Woo, I hope God shows up today. We are coming in as faith people, as honor people, and we are creating the atmosphere for God to do what he is longing to do. Amen. Amen. So get your sheets out and let's look at this. Yeah, if raise your hand if you need one of these. So remember I said at the very beginning, referencing uh, Brother Marty's message on Sunday morning when he was here in January, that we are being deliberate and specific with our faith. And when we ask vague and believe vague, that's what we get. All right? So you'll see down there, one of them says 20 salvations, adults, kids, and students. At least 20 people born again swept into the kingdom. This is what we're asking the Lord for. Okay? This is what we're expecting. Ooh, what? Seriously. What would, our, what would our countenance be? What would our demeanor me, be if we get up on Easter morning, resurrection morning, and we're expecting God to do this? Could we not wait to get here? Yeah. Come on now. It's, it, it, it's, it's not going to be, uh, oh, my word, Becky, what time do you have to be here? 6.15. Hospitality is getting here at 6.15. Uh, the worship team is getting here really quite early themselves. So it's not going to be a drudge. It's not going to be, oh, my word, uh, we've got two services. We're going to be so tired by the time we leave. It ain't going to be none of that because we're expecting God to show up. We're expecting to see people's life change for eternity. Glory to God. <clears throat> um seen, felt, heard the tangible presence of God. We know that God said he would never leave us and he would never forsake us and that God is everywhere. Is that right? We know this to be true. But this is also true, that his manifested presence 
is not everywhere. Amen. His manifested presence shows up in the atmosphere of honor and expectation. Okay? We're believing for uh, the family feel that it feels like home, the home they never had, you know? When they come through the door, they, and I don't know how many people have said this before anyway. I don't know what it is. As soon as we came through the doors, we just knew we were at home. We, had, we, sensed, we sensed love like we haven't sensed before. Okay, this is what we're believing. Can, can you say that that's important? Okay. 30 people being connected to the life of the body in whatever, in whatever way it is. 30 people who have not been connected to the body that God has called them to be connected to, that connections are made. We pray about this all the time, you guys, in corporate prayer. All the time, praying for people that God has called to be a part of Beyond Church, to be connected and in their place, giving of their supplies. It's important. You, we need other people's supplies. Amen? Amen? Surely, after these last three uh, Sundays, we have gotten that of how important it is, the supplies coming into us and the supplies going out of us. And this is how the body grows up in the Lord in all things, by everyone being in their place and the giving of their supply. Okay. Um, yeah, connecting, not just sitting by themselves. Excellent service flow. Love oozing from BC people. Amen. We're believing the Lord for 400 per service, 400 people. So when we're praying, Lord, I thank you for at least 400 people in the 9 o'clock service and in the 11 o'clock service. And say, whoa, now you're just talking. It's all about numbers. You better believe it's about numbers. It's about pe the people on the earth being changed by God's goodness. Amen. People mean numbers. Oh, I skipped one. Sorry. What did I skip? That's right. Fun, memorable kids experiencing God's love. This is huge. Amen. We pray for this. We believe this. We just don't leave it up in the air for happenstance. Our faith is connected to God. And we are saying, Lord, we are believing you for a, a dynamic experience for our children that they experience the love of God that changes them forever. Yes, right. Glory to God. Yes. Do what? Raise them, Raise them up. That's right. And this children's ministry has never been a children's ministry that just babysits children. They are ministering the life of God to our children. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stop right here, and yes, I'm going to share a testimony about one of my granddaughters. I had all four of them in the back seat, and Avery was talking. She said, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting the, anyway, she was talking about being a queen. Mimo, when we get to heaven, will I be a queen? And I said, well, I said, no, you're not going to be a queen. And I said, Jesus is king. You have to be married to a king to be a queen, and Jesus is king in heaven and she said I said you are a child of God you are a child of God and Jesus is the king and she said that means I'm a princess I like being pre I like to be a princess I said that's right the children of the king are prince and princesses that's right and uh, she said, we're going to be princesses. She said, but Mimo, you know what I like better than that? She said, I like being a child of God the best. Oh, wow. Glory Thank to God. Glory to God. This isn't an accident, people. Yes, she's being trained at home. She's also being trained in this church. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the other side of that, we were coming to church on Sunday morning. And uh, Lainey... It just didn't look like she was feeling just really perky. And, of course, I was driving because, as you can imagine, getting four little girls ready on Sunday morning, I was, you know, hurrying to get here. And I looked in the rearview mirror, and I said, Lainey, are you feeling okay, honey? She just kind of shook her head. She smiled at me but shook her head. And I said, is something hurting? And she said, my throat. 
said, your throat's hurting. And Avery was sitting by her. I said, Avery, I said, pray for Lainey Kay. And Avery puts her hand on her throat. And she said, in the name of Jesus, I tell you that no sickness, no disease, you cannot be a part of this family. And you have to go in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. It's not a fairy tale. This isn't a fairy tale, you guys. Yes. Hallelujah. Joy, peace, gentleness, the atmosphere of that. Whole family swept in the starting of an addiction to God. How many times we've heard that word. It's been a prophecy that whole family swept in to the kingdom. Amen. And into the church, a vital connection, beginning an addiction to God. What does that mean? Oh, they've come in, and I'm telling you, I can't wait to get back. This isn't going to be just a once a month, once a ever six months sort of thing. I've got to come back because they were in the presence of the living God. Amen. Amen. Great expectation from our people. Atmosphere of honor that opens the door for miracles. Visions, dreams, and purposes being rekindled or seen for the first time. Amen. It says 30 guest cards filled out. So we're believing for 30 people who has never been here before. 30 people that's never been here before. That's another thing, you guys, we pray all the time. Father, the ones that are to be a part of this church and this ministry, we call them in. Whether they're saved or not, they're a supposed to be a part of this body amen they are to be saved amen set apart for the master's use guest services processes working well can we say an amen, amen. so this is another thing that we don't just leave to happenstance we plead we're pleading the blood of jesus and we're believing for all of our systems and all of the processes to be working smoothly is that important it is important smoothness and, and excellence because if things get chaotic we don't want chaos do we we want people to be at peace amen teams experiencing the reward of serving so I'm believing that I'm believing that this Sunday that our people I say I'm believing that we we that we are believing that that our people just can't wait to get up that morning. Yeah. Can't wait to get up that morning. And like you said, experiencing the reward of serving. Amen. $20,000 in tithes and offerings, significant offerings. Amen. And that our VC members are engaged in inviting people. I think it is, isn't it? You're not sure if it's posted or not. Have any of y'all seen this online? Okay. We'll, we'll try to get it there. Huh? There you go. There you go. Um, all right, so we're going to pray for just a few minutes. Are y'all good with that? And then we're going to take a break, and we're going to get back in here with uh, Brother Keith for the second session. All right? And I don't want to pray by myself. Can y'all hear me like this? Oh, I need, to, I need to leave it on, don't I? Can you just pull me down a little, um, please, Colby, so that I can actually hear people? Thank you, Lord. All right. So we're lifting up, we're lifting up uh, Sunday morning, okay? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we bless you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you in this house. Oh, we say thank you, Lord, for the greatness of who you are. Thank you for the greatness of who you are to us. Thank you, Lord, that before you ever created man, you chose to honor us. You chose to crown us with glory and with honor. Oh, hallelujah. And so, Lord, with a thankful heart. With a thankful heart, we come before you and we say, Father God, with all of our heart, we honor you. We thank you, Lord. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for the greatness of your plan. 
Oh, for the greatness of your plan that you have called and ordained and equipped us to be a part of partnering with you. <clears throat> That's right, partnering with you. Yep, co-laborers, co-laborers with you. Oh, hallelujah, yep, yep, everybody, everybody doing their part. And so we declare that, we declare that in this house, every person in their place, every person in their place, hallelujah, fully connected, fully connected, hallelujah. Oh, lambastiki, oh, lambastiki, do balakadastiki di ala kodo shamba babastiki, lombo bobo bo shandada ikada sanda. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we say thank you, Lord. We lift up Sunday morning to you, Lord. Oh, resurrection. Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord, for resurrection Sunday. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your complete and perfect redemption. Your complete and perfect redemption, spirit, soul, and body. Oh, we're so grateful, Lord. We are so grateful, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, lambasi kada sundo da basi kiria lo kodo shamba basi ki. And so, Lord, we're asking you, we're asking you for the 400, Lord, at least for the 400 in each service. You know the ones, Lord, you know the ones that you're calling that are ordained to be in this place on this Sunday. And we call you in. We call you in in the name of Jesus. Yep. Divine appointments, divine appointments between now and Sunday, between our people and the ones that we are to invite, divine connections. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that it's not happenstance, but we're, <clears throat> but we're asking you, who is it, Lord? Who is it that we are to invite? Who is it that we are to bring to church on Sunday morning, on resurrection morning? Oh, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for those divine connections. Mm-hmm. Oh, kodo siki. Oh, baba siki, babo shaka. Lombo siki di ala kodo siki. Oh, for an atmosphere of honor, an atmosphere of honor, and an atmosphere of faith. We charge it right now in the name of Jesus. An atmosphere of faith and expectation. For God Almighty to do what only you can do, Lord. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord, for an open door of utterance. We thank you for clarity in the Holy Ghost for Pastor Nate, Lord. Oh, that he declares the word of the Lord boldly. Not in man's wisdom, not in fancy speech, but in the power and demonstration of the Lord. <clears throat> Glory to God. And so we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that. Oh, we thank you for that. Hallelujah. We thank you that your word goes forth. Your word goes forth. And the power of the Lord is present to heal. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Halakodo shambabasiki. Lombasiki di ambabasiki. Obasiki. We thank you for the ones, Lord that you're knocking on the, uh, the door of their hearts. You're knocking, Lord. You're knocking on the door of their hearts. And Sunday is their day. Sunday is their day, the day of salvation, that they give their lives to you. Glory to God. In children's classes, in our children's classes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that children give their hearts to you. Hallelujah, to love you and serve you all the days of their lives. Fill them, Lord, with your presence. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah, the kids, the kids. Thank you, Lord, yeah, because the word of the Lord came through your, your prophet this year to watch the kids. Watch the kids that miracles and wonders would be wrought by the hands of the kids. Glory to God. <clears throat> and we declare that in this house. Our kids, Lord, 
our kids, our children, our grandchildren. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And such a joy and such an expectation in the hearts of your people, Lord. A joy and expectation on every B team member. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, such a joy and an expectation, not being able to wait to get to your house on Sunday morning. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your promise in your word that you said, when we draw near to you, you draw near to us. You said, when we honor you, you honor us. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All that's in your heart, Lord. All that is in your heart. Oh, shamba basiki di a sondo da basiki. Oh, mbalanda da i kada sodo da bakada siki. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, shamba basiki. Oh, balakada siki di a siki. An atmosphere, an atmosphere charged with a spirit of faith and expectation. Hallelujah for the miraculous. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now is the time. Now is the time. We are the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, your word declares that when Jesus is lifted up, that you draw all men to yourself. And so we say, Lord, be lifted up, be honored, be glorified in this house. Be honored and be glorified, be lifted up in this house. Glory to God, all men, all men drawn to you, all men drawn to you. And, oh, Father, for that great promise that you said, it's your goodness that draws men to repentance. It's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. And so I thank you, Lord, that your goodness is on display. Your goodness is on display for the world to see. In us and through us, your goodness is on display. Glory to God. Glory to God. We give you honor. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, and we're thankful, Lord, Father God, that when you raised Jesus from the dead, that you took us with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You took us with him. Hallelujah. Seated. Seated in him. Seated in him. Oh, Jesus. And we're so grateful. We're so grateful that you emptied yourself you clothed yourself with flesh and you became one of us to bring us back into relationship with the Father. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you loved us so much that you were unwilling to do without us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.